Currently, our guest bedroom looks like this. We do not have enough clothes storage in our current bedroom for all the stuff we brought from the small loft workshop. So two chairs and a brush handle are currently employed as a makeshift wardrobe. Now it seems as though I've been working on this project for a long time. In fact, it was the end of summer when I first made these cuts to four sheets of 18mm melamine face chipboard. And I started to cut the materials before I built my workbench and my cantilevered coals. This video will focus on the construction and installation of the carcasses for the wardrobes. The top and the doors will be in a later video. And this wardrobe build will be made on a shoestring budget. Because now I've come to live full time in France, I've crossed the bridge between cash rich time poor to time rich cash poor. Now I do not say that for you to feel sorry for me. I'm snuck short of a pan of rosin. But when you are making this kind of project, it's easy for the accessories cost to run away and actually cost more than the main components of the build. But I will explain a little bit more about the cost as we go through this build. So, so far you've seen me cut the components to length. I've cut the angles to match the slope of the roof. These wardrobes are being installed in a bedroom with a sharp sloped ceiling. And here is a snippet from my last video which shows me setting out and cutting the sides of the carcass to provide some feet. I received some comments on this video that said why didn't I build on a plinth or why didn't I use some adjustable feet. So to address those two comments, firstly the feet in my local DIY shop are two euros fifty each. So to buy the feet for these wardrobes would have cost me thirty euros. The melamine I'm using for this build costs seventeen euros ninety per sheet. So the four sheets I bought cost me seventy one euros sixty. The feet would have been more than fifty percent of the cost of the wardrobe build so far. Secondly, because I'm building this wardrobe under the eaves and it's only half height, I could not afford the extra height a plinth would have provided. The clothes on the hanging rail were hang almost down to the floor to maximise the internal space of the wardrobe. I hope these two points answer the comments I received against that video. In addition to this information and the fact, as I stated earlier, I am now time rich, this afforded me time to spend cutting these sides out in three ways. As we all know with woodwork there is more than one way to do any given task. Now it is time to start to assemble the components and firstly I'm assembling the central unit. I had already inserted some pocket hole screws in the back and the base panel. These were just to help me screw the carcass together whilst I could get some additional fixing. When you have spent hours of work preparing components it's always really satisfying to put the unit together. At this point I had not quite finished all the components in the workshop. I actually brought this build forward and worked a little bit out of sequence because of the atrocious weather we was having in the Dordogne this particular week. And by putting this wardrobe together in the bedroom gave me some nice indoor warm work. Now regular viewers of this channel may have noticed there's something different about this video and the last couple of videos and that is there is no music. And that is because my wife and I have started a new YouTube channel about living in France. The feel of that channel will be much different from the small bound workshop and will cover a much broader range of subjects than just woodworking. If you would like to visit the channel then there are some links in the description. So just going back to the topic of music like most people, when I'm in the workshop, I like to listen to music, a radio or podcast. But 
if you have the noise of that music coming through your videos on YouTube, you will get a copyright strike against your channel, which is why I prefer to edit my videos with music to mask the music that was playing in the workshop. So if you like the music in my videos, then firstly, I apologize, but pop over to the other channel where there is music galore. Or if you didn't like my music, and I know it wasn't for everybody, then happy days, there is going to be no or little music on this channel. So whilst I've been telling you that news, I've been putting the unit together. And now I've popped back to the workshop to cut the intermediate plinth and some inch by inch bearers to screw the plinth to the bottom of the unit. And back in the bedroom, it was a case of fitting the intermediate plinth and the bearers for the front plinth don't you just hate those sticky labels they put on the face of melamine materials? Uh, oh, can you rescue it from yeah, behind? Can we? Yeah. Oh, we're rescuing it, Gracie. Right, it's now time to turn the unit the right way up and slide it into its position, which is bang on central in the space on this wall. Now the other way I saved money on this build was to buy 600mm wide material and where I needed 300mm wide material cut it in half. This leads to raw edges as it's cheaper than buying 300mm wide sheets. This is the reason why when I cut the plinths I cut them with a toe kick both sides so I could cut it straight down the middle. The wardrobe build has two wings and these will be the areas where the clothes hang from rails and the part of the wardrobe with no bases to allow for the maximum hanging height. With the central unit plumbed and levelled I could fit the feet on the wings to the height of the central unit. And once the sides were levelled, I could then build up the unit which comprises of two sides and a shorter base that allows the close to hang. The left hand wing is constructed exactly the same as the right hand wing. I can now start to fix the frames in their permanent positions and to do this I'm using some inch timber. In fact, I'm cutting up lengths of parquet flooring that I find good quality and cheap to do this. I pay 25 euros for a pack of five. So each piece is five euros. And here to make the grounds and the side cheeks, I'm using two pieces. So that's another 10 euros. I start the fixing process from the right hand end. First, I fix a ground to the masonry wall I also fit the ground to the left hand wall. I then prepare the right hand front facing and for this I need to scribe it over the skirting board. I cut the scribe mostly at the bandsaw and then finesse the curve with a round rasp. Back in the bedroom I needed to fettle the scribe to the wall to ensure the best fit. I could then glue and screw that piece to the ground I had fixed to the wall. Next I can insert the right hand wing and fix it to the piece I have just fixed to the wall. Pieces of timber at the top are just temporary braces. With the right hand frame fitted I can now screw this frame to the middle section and screw the middle section back to the wall to make sure all that section is secure. Finally, the left hand section is secured to the middle section and to the ground and the scribe on the left hand side. The next task is to fit the top which holds all the sections in place. This is cut from a 600 piece of melamine ripped down the middle again to save some cash. Now this is not the finished top, it is the under top that will support the finished top which I envisage to be much grander, albeit on a budget. It needs to be cut around the two uprights on either end. Mm. 
Now I needed some more timber and I'm using two more pieces of the parquet floor. So another 10 euros of spend. And from these pieces, I'm cutting the plimps, some shelf supports and some thin noses. I'm also cutting the three shelves for the central unit. And after I've finished with my melamine face chipboard, this is what's left from the four sheets. The plimps are in four parts. There is two small returns on each end and then the long piece which is made from two pieces are down the front. The plimps are just screwed to the melamine face chipboard bearers behind them and they're screwed at an eye level so the screws can't readily be seen. Because of the back construction and because the roof cuts into the back of this unit, the top shelf is fixed permanently. These are on inch by inch bearers. At the moment I'm not fixing the two other shelves because we're waiting to find out where they need to be positioned once we load up the wardrobe. And by the way, the two weird dog things on the thumbnail of this video are actually storage containers. Finally, those thin nosings I cut at the saw was to glue on the back of the raw edges of the MFC, just so any stored clothes don't get snagged on the rough edges. Due to the lack of clamps, these were mostly taped on. They was left to cure overnight. Yes, very childish. And you missed. And that's it for the carcass. I'll see you soon whilst we'll be finishing the top and making the doors.